If you're watching this on counsellingtutor.com or floated by on YouTube, a very warm welcome. My name is Rory Lees Oaks and in this presentation we're going to look at the phenomenology of person-centred therapy. I know that a few of you have written in or spoken to me um, about trying to get to grips with what phenomenology is and that it's appearing on assignments um, for quite a few courses now. So I thought I'd do a presentation on it and try and give you an idea, a simplified idea of this quite complex idea in philosophy. So we'll start off with a definition of phenomenology. In simplest terms, phenomenology is the interpretive study of human experience. The aim is to examine and clarify human situations, events, meanings and experiences as they spontaneously occur in the course of daily life. And that's from von Ektarsberg, Introducing Existential Psychology, um, 1998. So when he talks about, or when it's talked about, examine and clarify human situations, let me ask you a question. Have you ever found yourself in a series of events or an event in your life where you've asked yourself the question, what does this mean to me? What does this mean to me? And almost certainly you are asking yourself a phenomenological question. You are saying to yourself, what does this mean to me? Not anybody else, but to me personally, as in my own experience. So that's a starting point and gives us a clue to a wider idea in phenomenology. Carl Rogers touched on phenomenology and we know that he read a lot of phenomenological literature when he was beginning to construct his ideas and develop this new idea in therapy at the time, which was called client-centred or person-centred theory. In Becoming a Person in 1961, he wrote, Experience for me is the highest authority. The touchstone of validity is my own experience. No other person's ideas and none of my own ideas as as authoritative as my experience. It is in turn experience that I must return to again and again to discover a closer approximation of the truth as it is in the process of becoming in me. It's quite a powerful statement that. And what Rogers was really saying was that no one else's ideas or experience is as relevant as his own. But he, he must check it again and again to make sure that he's right. So how does that look? Well, here's the roller coaster. So I want you to use your imagination now. I'm asking for a leap of imagination and faith. Imagine you were watching this roller coaster ride at the amusement park. And imagine that when it finished, every one of the people in the picture would stand in one long line. And individually, they would walk up to you and tell you how they felt about the roller coaster ride, what it meant to them. Now, the first thing that might happen is you might get lots of different ideas of how it felt. There would be no one authoritative idea of how it felt. There might be a theme, some people might say it was scary, but everybody would have a different view of it. But let me ask you this question Would that experience of being told by the 40 or 50 people on the ride be the same as if you went on it yourself so could you go away from the amusement park thinking that by interviewing the people who'd been on the ride it was enough for you to have experienced it as it would have been if you'd have been actually on it and the answer is probably no and the reason for that is that we value our own experiences you cannot live someone else's experiences all you can do is try and interpret them and that's what we do in therapy we try and interpret other people's experience try and get as close to their truth as we can but unless you've actually been there you'll not be able to experience it all now the father if you like a phenomenology was a french philosopher called maurice Moulu Ponte, and he lived from 1908 to 1961, 
And incidentally, 1961 is the date that Rogers published On Becoming a Person. So there's lots of evidence that Rogers read a lot of Merleau Ponte's work. He was fascinated by the idea of phenomenology. And Maurice Merleau Ponte stated, We must therefore rediscover, after the natural world, the social world, not as an object, or as some of objects, but as a permanent field or dimension of existence. That looks on the face of it quite a complicated statement, but I think what Merleau Ponte was saying was that it's not good not good enough for us to sort of say, this is my partner, if you like, or this is my friend. He he's saying we need to interpret it and to consider how it what it means to us. We cannot analyse a view of a rock in the same way that we analyse or, or understand the view of our personal relationships or indeed our life. Now it's interesting that Carl Rogers clearly pulled a lot of his ideas from, of personality from Merleau Ponte's work because as you can see in 1961, which was the year that Maurice Merleau Ponte died, Rogers published his theory of personality and the first idea in the 19 propositions of his personality theory was that all individuals or organisms exist in a continually changing world of experience which he called the phenomenal field of which they are the centre. So in other words, everybody exists in a changing world. Yeah? And we're the centre of that world. If our work changes, our relationships changes, it has an impact on us, which means that we're the centre of that change. And it's basically exactly what Merleau Ponte was saying. So we can see there's a clear connection between the thinking of Carl Rogers and the thinking of this French existential philosopher. John Schleen, who died in 2002, was a student of Carl Rogers and developed further the idea of phenomenology in person-centred therapy. He really carried the flag of person-centred therapy in America after Rogers died and he was a very authoritative voice on the person-centred or the client-centred approach. Um, and he wrote a book called To Lead an Honourable Life. I'll put a link into the library of the website so you can have a look at that and have a look at the review. John Schleen wrote his own principles, his own ethical principles down. And one of the interesting principles he wrote down was his final one, Principle 7. Everyone knows everything. This is not a theory of knowledge. It is that you, I, we know everything about ourselves. There may be defences, demons, cover-ups, secrets, faults and overloads in memory. But we know, we know, we are the ultimate source. And this really links into phenomenology. The idea that our experience as human beings is our ultimate source of understanding our world. And that at some level we know everything about ourselves, but we allow defence mechanisms or fears, or we avoid things, or we keep things secret, or we just can't remember, we're so busy we can't remember the truths about ourselves. But ultimately, we are the ultimate source of those truths. We know who we are, but sometimes we just don't want to look at it, we avoid it. I'm going to show you a phenomenological moment. Look at the connection between the infant and the caregiver. Look at how the child touches the adult, the eye contact and the sense of connection. What feeling does this bring up for you? Just take a few moments just to look at that picture of the child and the caregiver. What feeling does it bring up for you? And whatever that feeling is and that sense you have, for me, it's just a really beautiful moment of connection between two human beings. That's my phenomenological view of the world. That feeling that I have, that sense that's within me now, is a phenomenological moment. If we look at phenomenology in terms of the core conditions, using the core conditions of empathy, 
congruence and unconditional positive regard. A phenomenological encounter is initiated by the therapist. The client is invited to share their unique view of the world. So in therapy, in person-centered therapy, the therapist is offering themselves as a companion to walk alongside the client in their reality, to explore their reality in which they are joined by the therapist in a journey of personal discovery. So person-centered therapy is a growth model. It's an inside-out therapy. It relies on the client being able to harness their own natural growth potential, their emotional growth potential. And when they're doing that, and when that's happening within the therapy room, at that point, therapists and the clients are engaging in a phenomenological experience. If you want further information, if you're watching on YouTube, if you click the links below um, with the red arrow, I'll put some links into sites about phenomenology and psychology. And why not visit us on counsellingtutor.com. I'll put a link in the bar below so you can just do a link to that as well. And finally, as always, thank you for watching.